Oh, here we are with my little cutie teddy bear. Here she is. It's all in one, which is the good bit about it, apart from obviously the arms and the ears, so it makes it quite easy to do. If you've already done my kitten that I've got, if you have a look, it's very similar. So you imagine that with the kitten. Um, and it's just reversed round, so these are legs instead of ears. So it's a very similar. I think the actual stitches are slightly different, but not much really. I've done it in a DK yarn, uh, so we've got a double knit wool here. This one has got a little sparkle in it. You don't have to do that, and I've just chosen the baby pink. But again, colours options are your your own choice. Now, got some toy stuff in my normal scissors, crochet hook, three millimeter. I've used for this one. We have a little bow just to accessorise and I have some safety eyes here as well. I'm just checking the size on them. I don't know what it says on there. I will double check that for you and pop it in the description. So, and there's the backs for the safety eyes. So we can move all that out of the way. So we don't need any of that. We don't even need that one yet. And we're going to get on with our little bear. Let's move my needles as well. It starts very similar to my others. This is an amigurumi style, so that is why it's going to do that. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer to the camera because uh, someone did request that. My only worry is the closer you get, sometimes the more blur you can get. So I wanted to be a little bit careful here. Now I know a three mil hook is sort of quite a small hook really for a double knit yarn, but it does keep it nice and tight. So it is worth using. I'm going to be starting with my two chain. And I'm going to be starting with the six double crochets into that first chain, which is one that I do on nearly every single one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And don't forget, you can slow me down on the settings. I'm not sure whether it is on the phone. I had a look earlier because someone asked me. Um, I couldn't actually find it on my phone either because I'm usually on the computer. Um, but I know it's a little cog shape. And if you click on that, you get various options for speeding up, volume, sort of all sorts of sort of uh, different things you can alter. So that was our six double crochets into one. I'm now going into the first one that I did and I'm doing two double crochets. And then I'm going to do a one double crochet. Two double crochets in the next one. So I have one and two. One double crochet in the next one. So that's two sets. So I've gone two, one, two, one. So I need another set. Two in this one. And one in the next one. Tighten it up. This has now given me nine stitches in total so i'm going to do a double crochet round just one double crochet into each so i should have nine stitches so we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine I need to push it out a little bit because I'm still inside out like that. So I'll just pop it over my little finger and push it shape out. So you can start to see what we're going from now. We have another increase round. It's two double crochets in one, one in each of the following two. So we have a two in one. Then we have one and a one. So one and one. We're going to have that set three times. So we have a two in one, one in two, one, one more time, two in this one and one in the next two. This now has given us 12 stitches and we're just going to do one double crochet round and then that'll be one little leg made. I've already made the second one so you don't need to worry about watching me do a second one. So we have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The arm caught a bit there. Nine, ten, eleven, 
and 12. Now I am not fastening off, so no cutting, because I need that there. Now my first little leg I did, which I popped a little stitch marker in it so I knew which it was. Let's take that out. I've, I have actually fastened that one off, so that is completely fastened off, so that's okay. I want it fastened off. I'm just going to get rid of that because it's going to get in my way. And basically, I'm going to be taking... I mean, look whether I have done that leg right. Is that the leg? I hope that's the leg because I've got two more pieces over there. <laughs> She's going to end up lopsided. Hmm, that doesn't look right, does it? What have I got there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's what I've just done on that one. It looks a little bit shorter. Because I did that yesterday. Um, oh, got to drop it. We're going to go for it. Basically, you need to make two of these. One you fasten off, one we haven't. So I haven't fastened this one off because I need to join it to this one. So I'm going in. So can you see I've just got the two of them on the hook now? This is our yarn we're using. So back around my hand and I'm going to pull it through. And complete as a double crochet now I like to know which is my front and my back so it just means you don't have to count so much otherwise you do have to count so I'm going to pop this little stitch marker in on this leg and that's the side I started on because I'm not going to say how many stitches now I'm just going to say double crochet all the way around till you get back to this point so the stitch marker will help so we're just going to double crochet all the way around just one double crochet in each stitch now for those of you wanting to sort of speed up a little bit and you don't want to sort of stay with me you want to fast forward I'm actually going to do five rounds in this pale pink okay so I'm not counting I don't need to count I'm just going to go around to my stitch marker and as I say if you do need to slow me down See if you can. I'll have another look. In fact, I might ask my son if he knows where the. Uh, now this bit's a bit weird. Can you see we get to this bit? It's where it's just joined. You still need to pick this up. So it's going across the middle of its legs. So we're still round. We're not round yet. See, that's just swiveling. I'm not there yet. That should be that side. It's just because it's swiveling about. So it's just one double crochet into each one and there will be five rounds so if you want to skip you'll just keep going round to your marker five times if you've done a row of this well row around of this it makes it a little bit easier it just wiggles about a bit until you get that first one out of the way So I really do hope this isn't blurring. I hope I'm not doing all this and then I've got to do it again. But I'm just trying to make it a little bit closer. So I've done one round there. I have my trusty pencil and paper. I will make a little mark. I have gone round once. And as I've said, I need that five times. If you're changing colour, that is. So all the way around again. Now double crochet, UK term. Oh. Try not to get that in the way. Watch for these. It's up to you. You can sort of sew them in, cut them off, whatever. But, but because they are actually going to just sit inside the bear, I've not sort of over worried about that. They do get in your way a little bit, but it's not bad. So this is round number two. Little Bear isn't technically a Valentine's thing, because I know I said I was going to sort of look at some Valentine themes, but I thought, well, it's a very cute sort of little gift for somebody in whatever colour range you want to do. Could turn it into a bunny rabbit if you wanted to, if you gave it some longer ears. Doesn't have to be a teddy bear. Again, the versatility of Amigurumi is fabulous. And we're round already. So that's two rounds. So it didn't really take that long. Just having a look. I can actually see the uh, timer today. I must have put the phone in differently. I don't know why. I don't normally see it. So I'm on nine minutes. So that's another round. So mark it off. If you're in a nice quiet room and you can count, you don't need to be marking off. But 
I have a tendency to forget or I go off on a tangent or I see something else that distracts me. Definitely got quite a butterfly brain for that. You can see how it's starting to shape now. So you've got a little bit of shape there. As I say, this is very, very similar to the kitty that I did, but almost upside down. I know some of you have been doing the kitty since Christmas, so I know he's going to be giving some little gifts for somebody, which is lovely thought. I think I used a bigger hook for your kitty as well. I think it was a 3.5 mil. Hook size is up to you. To be honest, for a double knit yarn, you can get any get away with anything from this three up to a four and a half. The only thing is, unless your tension's tight, if you get up to sort of a four and a half, which I personally wouldn't use, but you could, it will start to look a bit holy. And then when you've got to stuff it, you can see the stuffing coming through. I know some people use larger hooks to speed things up, but I really don't think that was round number three. Um, it's worth it. For the final effect i think you're better off with a smaller hook to keep the work nice and tight so you can't see any stuffing or any little gaps so it's not bad if you think we're already on uh, round th four four yeah round four i'm just looking at what i've written there i've written something it says uh, change to pale pink well i'm already on pale pink so i'm not going to be changing to pale pink at all am i so one double crochet into just every stitch i've not thought about how many stitches there are i'm not worrying about it just go for it all the way around to the stitch marker going back to the hook size of course if you do do this with a larger hook he's going to come out slightly larger which is okay i personally would not go above a four millimeter hook for double knit yarn and then that would be only if it was something like a cardigan pattern or i've been told to do it from a pattern and then of course you've got to do it because there's a reason for it but i like to keep my hooks as small as they can as the yarn can take I mean, this is quite comfortable this is picking this up nicely so i don't think there's a problem there so that's four we just have one more round in this pale pink or whatever color you're working with you could do lots of them different colors i just fancy doing something pastel it's not something i really do a lot of and i see other people's work and they do all these gorgeous pastel colors and i'm like oh it's so pretty but i never actually do it so i thought yeah let's go for a nice baby pink and of course I've got my glittery, uh, well, I was going to say turquoise then, it's not turquoise is it, it's lilac or light purple. I don't know, there's always arguments about colours in this house, sort of what colour is what. doesn't help, my husband's colour blind so uh, he's sort of going, where's my so and so shirt? And I'm like, you don't own one. But most of them cave to what I say now. They sort of trust that I am saying what the correct colour is. Right, I'm going to say that is round five. Can you see? Those cute little tiny legs. For some reason, I don't know why, it doesn't look like the clang of this. It doesn't. It's the colours that's doing it for me. Uh, but when I made it, I'm like, why does it remind me of a clanger? And a clanger's got a big nose. It's sort of, I don't know, it almost looks like a cross between a pig and an elephant. You know, it's definitely got a different shape in. But I think it is the, it is just the colours and the way I've done it. Right. Everybody has a different way of joining. You can either just pull in here. That's one way of joining your yarn and then you continue. Some people like to do it before they finish off this last stitch there. And pull it through. That's another way of doing it. Or you can just fasten off and restart your yarn. The problem is with amigurumi, it is spiral. If something is spiral, you're going to get a dip, whether you like it or not. There are ways of doing it. I don't seem to have mastered it. I mean, you might find somebody else out on YouTube there that does a better join. So have a nosy what they're doing and it might help. I'm just going to go with, I'm going to come out. I'm going to finish that stitch. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to pull it in there. Like I said, completely up to you for your join. I just find that an easy one, that's all. So make sure everything's nice and tight. If you wish to tie it now, you can. 
it is entirely up to you I will tie it it is going to be tucked inside so we won't be sewing any of the ends in but we don't want it coming undone either it's a very clumsy way of tying this should have really just put it down and done it right so I've tied it anyway basically just tied the two ends and I'm going to continue with our pretty little lilac and again if you fast forward in from now I'm going to do five rounds in the lilac so it's just the same so we have five rounds in the pink five rounds in the lilac I'm moving away from this camera a bit again aren't I so these are just double crochets no more no less in every single double crochet I've had this uh, lilac sparkle for ages I've been wanting to use it for something I did a doll hat a while back in it but I've not done anything recently there we go I've popped a little bow in the teddy's head on the teddy's head you can pop a flower you can not do anything like that in fact I'm just thinking that little bow would have made an adorable bow tie you know, if you got rid of that one see I've not stitched that on properly yet that looks so cute it's got a little bow tie so it's up to you you could do one in each side oh or not they're all falling off falling all over the place that looks quite cute actually so basically you dress it up as you want whether you're making your own bows whether you've got bows that are actually bought these are just ready-made bows so they don't take much working on just a little bit of white cotton stitches them into place or if you're really averse to uh, stitching on you could always use glue to do it just remember who's actually going to be getting it if you're giving it as a gift you want to make sure it's all nice and safe right these bits here now are really annoying me so I'm going to shove them inside out of the way saved you a bit of stuffing there we go so that is one round hands feel really clumsy today I get days like that I do have some problems with my hands but uh, on average they're pretty good in fact to be honest the more I keep crocheting the more sort of movement I keep in them if I have days where I'm not doing any crafting uh, my hands sort of seize up a little bit and I'm sure there's many of you that will feel the same with that but I do find them if I keep going as long as I don't do too much because again if I've done a lot if I've got orders or uh, I've got a convention coming up something like that my hands can start to ache but otherwise if I keep crocheting it keeps them all nice and moving so we're on our second round I have marked it down I wasn't sure whether this one would be a little bit too long to do there isn't that much more to do didn't want to do it watch it because this has got a if you're using yarn like this because it has a filament run it through sometimes you can catch the filament right so that is two we're on our third round so after this round there's not a huge amount more to do there's a tiny bit of shaping not a lot and the ears and the arms are so fast that they're only a couple of rows. In fact, they're actually smaller than the legs. I think that's coming up nicely. I wasn't sure whether the purple was a little bit pale next to the pink, but I think it works. If you want to count to work out how many stitches you've got by all means do but you don't have to so it's the beauty of amigurumi it's quite flexible all right so that is number three just two more rounds in the lilac and then we're back to that baby pink i think i've caught it a bit there look if that happens you can always just pop your hook through just hook that and pull it through it's gone now it's just where I've not exactly split it, um, but it's sort of pulled a little bit. I think it must be where I'm stopping and starting there. Right, 
feel like I'm being a bit quiet today. I'm very aware of the time, I think that's the thing. I mean, I'm on 20 minutes. Of course, it hasn't taken 20 minutes to get to this point because the first part was just us, sort of, well, just me chattering about what you were doing rather than getting on with it and showing you the parts. So I don't know, what do you reckon? 15 minutes-ish, 15, 20 minutes. It's another one round. That was four, we have just one more round. They like little uh, baby grows, don't they? That'd be quite cute, actually. Like a longer version. I haven't really got any dolls that are like that, though. I don't really do baby dolls. I mean, my Cindy has a couple of baby dolls. But I don't collect baby dolls. Last round in lilac. So it doesn't take much lilac. I mean, you don't have to even do a midsection with a colour. You could just leave him all one colour. I just thought it'd make him look like he's got a little top on or something like that. And also then if you did want to sort of in, sort of make him a little bit more individual, you can each time change that colour. Am I round? I'm round. So that was number five. I'm going to trim off that purple and bring in my pink again. I'm just going to do the same joining in method as before. It keeps it relatively neat, but like I said, I know there's lots of ways. There's one way you can split the yarn. Didn't have much success with that one personally, but I don't think it really matters when it's like this anyway. So I'm going to do a couple of stitches first. Then I'm going to, well, this is what I should have done last time. I should have put it down and tied the knot. That made sense. Instead of trying to tie it while I was holding it again, shove those inside. Move them out of the way. All right, we've changed to pale pink again and we're going to start with just one double crochet round first. So off we go. So if you'd fast forwarded me and you've rejoined in, we do have some decreasing now. So you may not want to sort of skip this particularly or at least watch it. Maybe note down what your decreases are and then you can get on with it. The more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking they make little cute uh, dolly clothes. I've got to make some bits anyway for my granddaughter's birthday. She's asked for some doll's clothes along with her other bits and bobs. And that's coming up very soon. Right, so that was one round. We are now going to start a decrease. And I'm not going to we would think going so many stitches, then decrease. So many stitches, then decrease. I'm going to just tell you at each side, so this side and this side, you're going to do two together. Now, if you want to pop yourself a stitch marker, that's fine at each side so you know where you're going to be doing it. Or I think you can just sort of see, you sort of just line it up. And we're going to be doing a, couple, a one double, double I was going to say then, we're going to do one decrease at each side. So I need a couple more stitches till I'm classed as a side. I would say that is near as damn it. So two together. And then one double crochet in each all the way around to the other side except i'm not counting i'm not telling you there's so many between each one i just want you to decrease down the side of its body sometimes decreasing can be visible and this way it's at the side rather than anywhere else so i think there and then just a double crochet all the way around to the stitch marker Still moved away from the screen and uh, I'm having to learn so many different skills as far as the filming and that's concerned. It's, it's getting there, but I really do need to think about it. Right, we're going to double check this. We're going to decrease again one at each side. So we'll double crochet up to where we think the side is. And I think that's the side. 
two together you can actually see where you've done your previous two together and like I said I don't want you over stressing about it just go round to the side and do two double crochets together Here we are, we're at the side again, two together, and then double crochet up to that marker. You're going to be setting his eyes in soon. Right, and that's that. So I'm ticking off as I'm going, so I've got it written down next to me to make sure that we're doing it right. So we've had two rounds where we've decreased. Let's have a look. So you can see his shape coming. Yep, now I've actually made a very slight alteration from my original one I made because after I decided I didn't want as many decreases as I'd indicated before. So we are going to have one more round where we're going to decrease. So double crochet to the side. When you feel you're at the side, which I think is about there, remember when we do two together, three on the hook and pull through all the way around to the other side and this is going to be my last side uh, decreases I mean there's a decrease at the end because we need to pull it together but this is the last one where I'm going to do a side decrease and there we go so two together so two on the hook three on the hook pull it through I'm going to have two more rounds that are going to be just double crochet rounds. We have less stitches now, so it shouldn't take too long. I'm just looking, I have a message on my phone. Bear with me a second, I'm just checking what time I'm on. Ooh, I'm going to have to pause and start again. I've got to pop out. As I was saying, Mel, I'm going to down to my granddaughter's because she's got dance class tonight. And that was a mum just sending me a message to remind me. So I'm going to stop Little Bear when I get back round to the stitch marker. In fact, I think I've gone past it, haven't I? Because I got distracted there and I was carrying on crocheting. Right, I'm going to get to the stitch marker and stop. And you might see a little glitch in the two different in the two different bits of filming but I'll try and keep it as neat as I can right so it's not going to look like I've stopped there for you guys but I am disappearing uh, for an hour and I'll be back and we'll get this little bear finished so I will see you very soon I'm back only seems like a second to yourselves but I have been out for an hour and I'm back to finish my teddy bear now now I'm pretty sure I was as I commented on the previous sort of seconds ago that I think I did actually do two round but I was so busy talking I missed where my stitch marker was so I'm going to say after all those decreases here I did two plain double crochet rounds then we're just going to put the eyes in and then we're going to be working to close it up so in fact shall we put a bit of stuffing in first I think we will because we need to get right down into those legs and it's a little bit hard to get there if the eyes are in the way so this is just a good toy grade stuffing make sure it's got a safety uh, guide on it you want to make sure you get some good quality stuff there we go down in both sides so we can decide how sort of chubby you want him or not in fact we can get rid of this stitch marker now we don't really need that on let's get a little bit into its tummy i'm saying he i don't know what it is it's up to you right so now we need eye positioning now just pop it in without the backs first just to see whether that's where you want I'm looking at the other one and I look like I'm about three up three from the purple that is and I think that looks mm, it looks a little bit narrower than the other one a little bit but the thing is again when it stretches out it does change so be aware of sort of where you're positioning things for that reason i'm going to leave it there i quite like that so i'm happy with that so i now got to put the backs on now with these backs it's dome side up for these particular ones i'm using i can't hold them um that i am using so dome up on 
you need some a surface to push down onto one two three it's usually three clicks with the ones i have the ones you use may be slightly different but make sure you know what position you have in before you lock them in because when they're in they're in right oh swiggling about this one keep still keep still he doesn't want to keep still my hands are still cold because i've literally only just come in so i've got one two three a little bit tight to put on but it's better that for the safety aspect of it so off we go again we're now going to literally do two double crochets together in every single set of stitches so two together remember we should have three on the hook pull it through all three one so we don't finish that double crochet then we start the second one pull it through all three so you can go a little bit closer for that for you so one all three one all three and we're just going to do that for a little while you need a bit more stuffing in so don't completely close it up yet so i really don't know how far how close i can get away with i don't know whether i need sort of some posh camera for that or something i mean remembering i am only filming on my phone so it might sort of not work right i need to put some more stuffing in there looks a little bit weird before the ears go on all the way in just give it a, a little wiggle about there i think we can still take a little bit more surprising how much stuffing you use to be honest you think you've sort of got more than enough and especially if you're doing something big it goes through an awful lot which is something you have to consider if you are making the items to sell because people just think oh you're just crocheting an item but just to buy the stuffing if you're buying good quality stuffing it will add up i think that's okay just looks like a we said it like a tooth yesterday it does look a bit like a tooth doesn't it right now i'm going to carry on with two together you could do a little white one as a tooth that'd be quite cute don't know why you want a cute tooth, but it would work. So just two together, two together, all the way. Make sure you're pulling it tight because we don't want any uh, gapping here. It's very easy to get gapping. So if I do the two, oh, or not, I've dropped that one. Let's start again. So I go in one, pull it through, next one, pull it through, pull it through all three. I'm sort of giving it a little pull each time as well because i want it nice and tight ready for the next stitch it's a little bit awkward as you get towards the end sort of fighting to get in there a little bit right i think that will do or it won't because i've just done that stitch wrong so i'm gonna to have to do it again i hadn't done it wrong it came undone let's do it again in pull it through oh we have the two right i'm gonna stop there Fasten it off and pull it through. Obviously, we need to sort of stitch that bit in, so just give it a little sort of wiggle around, and that is our bare shape. So you can see we've got the body. Now I've already made one ear and I've made one arm. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to make those two. They literally will take minutes, they are very simple to do. In fact, let me change my page over so I'm on the right page for them. Right, slip knots. Computer's just come on. Let me turn it down just in case it starts pinging. If notifications come through, it starts pinging. Right, so we have our slip knot, our two chain, our six double crochets into that first chain. One, two, three four five and six i'm doing the ear first i should have told you that it would have helped right now i'm going to do two double crochets in each of those six to give us 12 so we've got one two three Four, five, and one more, 
and six so we have 12 double crochet stitches to be working on now and you're going to do just two rounds of those 12 because it's only 12 we don't need to think about a stitch marker we can count so we've got one two three four five I do try and slow myself down occasionally at least six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve that's one round one more round twelve stitches one two three four five six seven eight nearly there nine ten eleven and twelve all right i'm going to say i'm fastening off there so that gives us our ear shape we'll sew one on in a second just to show you so let me pull that tight and it pushes out that way okay because we're going to be putting them together like that so it's going to fold across so we now have two ears we now need an arm the arm is even smaller so we're only going to do a slip knot two chain you know, we catch up with my words one two six double crochet into the first so we have one two three four five and six now you're not going to increase much we're not going to go up to 12 like we did last time we're going to have a two and a one a two and a one okay so we're going to have two double crochets in the first one one in this one two in the next one one in the next one one more set like that we have a two then that stitch is split do it again we have two in this one one in the next one so that gives us nine stitches now we don't need it as big as the ear that's why we're only gone up to nine there but we are going to do two more rounds of just nines so we have one two three four five six seven oh thank it in there eight and nine now I want one more round I'm just going to push it through that way so I can see what side I'm working on so nine more stitches so we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine we can do a slip stitch if we want i didn't on the others but it doesn't really matter with what we're doing and there we go so that i'm just going to put me hook in there to position it as you can see is a little arm so we're going to look at just stitching a few bits and bobs in there I'm just looking but my needle is there so we'll get rid of this one at first point the top of his head and all I'm going to do, because there's a little bit of a hole there, I'm just going to sort of thread it through. It's like darning. Thread it through. And then thread it through deeper. And again, because I like to make sure it's not going to come undone. I know it's knotted, but I don't want threads waving about either. And then snip. So that's that. That's the body. That's all sorted. So we're now going to pop on just one ear to show you. Now, I don't want that bit. I will get rid of that bit because that's the inside bit and when I fold it I want this to the edge and then I'm going to fold it over like so thread thread that just keeps it into that sort of little bobbly ear shape 
then I'm going to choose where my ear is going think about there I think I might have pulled this one a bit tight because the ear looks a bit smaller but again it doesn't really matter for this and I'm going to put one in and just pick it up the stitches all the way around his ear Where's my phone gone? Um, it's chelping at me um, because it's on uh, low power now. I'm just fated with this tutorial today. Right, I'm going to say that's the last stitch and I'm going to pop a knot in it. And I've gone and pulled that out now. It doesn't matter. For demonstration, I would then sew that through the body. Let's take a little arm. Now, I think the little arm needs a little bit of stuffing. Well, we've got a little bit of thread there, so we'll shove that in. And that sometimes can be enough, which I think it might be. And you've got to decide on the arm position, whether you want his arms pointing up in the air, whether you want them closer together, as if he's coming to give you a hug, or at the side. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go approximate side. So if I like that, yeah, I think that will do. And then I'm just picking up, like I've done with all of my other pieces. So I just pick up the outer and then a little bit from his body. Picking the outer part of the two chain and then his body. That's getting in the way now. Outer part, body, nearly there. I think one of the hardest bits is getting them equal either side, but sometimes I don't think that matters either. It looks like he's sort of maybe waving with one hand. Right, we're going to tie a little knot, and this time I'm not going to pull it out of my needle. I'm going to go through his body. I'm determined it is a boy, aren't I? It's not intentional. I don't know why I'm saying it even. And snip! So we have a little arm. So obviously we need another little ear to put on, and another little arm this side. And then like with this one, it's deciding whether you're wanting to decorate it up. A little bow in the hair, or well, not that it's got hair, but by its ear. I do quite like the idea of the bow tie. I think that bow works really well as a bow tie. I might do one with bow tie and the other one uh, with the two with the ribbon in the hair. But then I quite like. I mean, it's got hair as well, aren't I? I do quite like the two. Depends what accessories you've got. You may not want to pop an accessory on. Sort of pretty cute as it stands. Um, I've just used sort of a standard sewing cotton to sew on the details so i hope you enjoyed that a little bit of a long video i know hi i'm actually back for the third time on this video uh hence why i've actually popped all the details on these now so they've got all the legs and arms and i've put a little bow tie on that one and a little bow on the ear for this one but something i've noticed i've not finished is the actual mouth because obviously he's got this little v mouth so basically this is crochet cotton you can use embroidery thread whichever you prefer i'm taking it through from the back and just center position i'll take it a little bit further down i'm actually stood up uh, about there i think make sure the knot has come all the way through you don't want to see that knot in there that's it and then from that position i go from top like a v shape and back down and that's it that is the little mouth. It's very hard to actually sew in at this point or make a knot. So because I can't do that, I do like to thread through quite a few times in different directions. And you will find because it is going in the stuffing, it will actually hold. The other reason this is third time lucky is because I carried on with the other video and I had finished most of it and I realised the phone had actually gone dead. So that wasn't a lot of good. My hands look in a funny position when I'm stood up. So... We now have our two little bears, or whatever you want to call them, little critters, um, little clangers with no noses, whatever you want to call them. Um, if you did enjoy it, please usually like, subscribe and share. Subscriptions do mean a lot. Also, if you click on that notification button, it does mean that you'll get to find out when I do the next one. And as I mentioned, I think on the last one, I don't know whether it was before the phone cut out, I'm going to try and make Wednesdays my crochet days and we'll have different sort of subject matter as well. I might do the odd other one in between, but really I want to make Wednesday that day. So thank you very much for watching and I'll re-upload this and hopefully you'll see it very soon. Thank you. Bye.